Hello, and welcome to the third prototype reference video to be hosted on this YouTube channel. This episode is a sequel to my earlier video covering the Pacific Great Eastern Railway's paint and stencil schemes for freight cars from 1947 to 1972. This video will cover the British Columbia Railway's paint and stencil schemes from 1972 to 1984. So if you are modeling the British Columbia Railway or have an interest in its freight cars fleet, this video is for you. On April the 1st of 1972, the Pacific Great Eastern Railway became the British Columbia Railway, and the PGE map logogram was replaced with the new British Columbia Railway dogwood logogram. The new logogram comprised the dogwood, which is our provincial flower, on a circular yellow background, and the railway's new name appearing in a microgram of bold extended typeface. The railway's change of name and the new logogram was a further effort to identify the railway's geographical location in an era when its freight cars were traveling into the United States in increasing numbers. The new logogram appeared initially on several freight cars which were repainted at Squamish in March of 1972 and then on an order of new wood chip cars received in April of 1972. There were two sizes of the dogwood logograms for freight cars. There was a 40 inch high version for box cars, refrigerator cars, wood chip cars, and trailers. And there was a 20 inch version used on log state cars, gondolas, and hoppers. Several orders of freight cars, which were sourced quickly on lease during the 1970s, did not receive logograms. These cars were painted dark green and they received a stencil block in the upper left corner describing the lease arrangements. For freight cars which could not accommodate a dogwood logogram, such as various types of flat cars, an inline scheme was used. The railway's name was spelled out along the car side, often in the same microgram of bold extended typeface as in the logogram. The first freight cars to receive the railway's new paint, new name and logogram were a pair of box cars from the 4001 to 4075 series. These were the railway's first steel box cars delivered in 1947. In this earliest version, the reporting marks had periods after each letter, i.e. BCOL, and the dimensional data table was lined. That is to say there were lines above and below and also a vertical line separating the two columns. Note that the trucks were also painted light green. The yellow panels indicate caution, no running board, as it was typically removed during repainting. This would appear on the BL corner of the car only, where the ladders were left high to access the brake wheel. The AR ladders were typically cut down on the opposite corner of the car. This repaint of a car from the same series dates from 1974, so two years later, and here we see larger reporting marks in a different typeface, and the table for the dimensional data is not lined. Note the cut down ladders at the AR corner of the car and the corresponding lack of a caution no running board stencil block on this side. This car from the 4101 to 4300 series is a later repaint. It shows a reversion to a smaller typeface for the reporting marks and an unlined data table. The lines above and below the reporting marks and those dividing the data table were eventually deleted as a cost-saving measure. And this is a very similar scheme applied to one of the 4901 to 4950 series box cars, which had plug and sliding doors. And this photograph illustrates the reason for the name and logo change as this car was photographed all the way down in Texas. This car from the 4501 to 4600 series newsprint box cars, it dates from September of 1972. And this repaint shows the larger typeface for the reporting marks, but it has lines above and below in addition to the table for the dimensional data. And this car from the same series was painted a year later. It retains the larger typeface for the reporting marks. The table is still lined, but the line above the reporting marks is now deleted. So this, there's quite some variety here in the way these cars were stenciled during the first few years of the British Columbia Railway. 
This is a later paint job here, which shows the change back to smaller reporting marks and an unlined table for the data. This car is from the second series of newsprint box cars, and it has the larger reporting marks with the lined data table. You can see here the effect of weathering on the light green after all those years, and this is what would eventually prompt a change to dark green for all freight cars. Here we see a much later version of the paint and stencil scheme with the Helvetica medium reporting marks and no table for the data, an unlined data table. The Helvetica typeface would continue in use throughout the VC Rail era. This car is from the third series of newsprint box cars and they're identified by their external frame plug doors. So as mentioned, in, at some point in the early 1980s, the railway decided to paint all freight cars in dark green, as this color fared better over time than the light green. This car was repainted and stenciled in January of 1985. Now that's after the railway's change of name to BC Rail, and we see Helvetica medium reporting marks and no line table. So the date of this repaint would make it one of the last freight cars to be repainted and restenciled for British Columbia Railway because the BC Rail interim logogram was introduced during the same month. The first series of combination door box cars came with PGE and PGER reporting marks, but after 1972 they were subject to restenciling with BCOL reporting marks. This car came painted in, in the International Service Scheme of dark green with a light green door, but it has been partially repainted, re-stenciled with BCOL reporting marks, and it's received a dogwood logogram in place of the original PGE map logogram. The second series of combination door box cars came with BCOL or BCIT reporting marks and the dogwood logogram. This car displays its original paint and stencil scheme of light green for general service. Note that the forklift push pockets on the door were highlighted in yellow. The companion international service cars were painted in dark green with a light green door and they received BCIT reporting marks. At this time, cars dedicated to international service to the United States were eligible for certain tax incentives on the cost of their construction and ongoing maintenance. This car is from the third series of combination door box cars and their paint and stencil scheme was identical. Note how the light green has weathered during the 13 years of service and again this is what prompted the eventual change to dark green for all freight cars. And again, the companion international service cars were finished in dark green with light green doors, and again, yellow push pockets, and they received BCIT reporting marks. This car was repainted in 1983, and it displays the change to dark green with Helvetica reporting marks. Note that during repainting, the railway did not repaint the push pockets yellow. They are now the same color as the door. In 1973, the railway lost its long-standing car forwarding agreement with CN, creating an immediate need for home freight cars. With a housing boom in the United States and an urgent need for BC lumber, an emergency order for 500 boxcars was placed with the U.S. Railway Equipment Company. The first 80 cars were rebuilds of 40-foot boxcars, stretched to 50 feet, and they were finished in the international service scheme of dark green with light green door. And again, the yellow stencil block indicates no running board. This is another car from the batch of 80 double sliding door box cars, which was taken upon completion. Note that the unusual typeface for the reporting marks on these cars. The next 20 cars in this emergency order came from Southern Iron and Equipment Company, which was a subsidiary of USRM. These were all-door cars, similar to the more common Thrall version. They were painted all dark green, except for the galvanized roof, and the dogwood logogram was applied to plates, which were affixed to the doors. The remaining cars from the 1973 emergency order were double plug-door insulated boxcars. They were finished in dark green with a light green door. 
This car is from the first batch. And this car is from the second batch, which received an identical paint and stencil scheme. Note the unpainted galvanized roof, which was increasingly common during this era. The railway also sought to acquire more 40-foot boxcars during this time to meet an increasing demand for grain shipments from the Peace region. This is one of 50 cars acquired from the Bangor and Aroostook Railroad in 1974. They received a quick and partial repaint and primer to remove the previous owner's name and herald, and they received BCIT reporting marks for export grain service. Similar cars were also acquired on lease from the Central Railroad of New Jersey in 1974. These cars received a similar treatment with quick paint outs and re-stencils. However, this car retained its previous owner's herald for some time. This was known as the CNJ's Coast Guard scheme. Again, the cars received PCIT reporting marks for international grain service. Some of the ex-CNJ cars were eventually purchased off lease. This one was repainted in BCR light green with BCOL reporting marks and dogwood logogram. This car has the larger reporting marks and it has an unlined data table. This is one of 150 X Sioux line box cars, which were rebuilt by USRM for the BCR. They were painted all dark green and they did not receive logograms. Again, we see the unusual typeface for the reporting marks. These were leased cars, as indicated by the stencil block in the upper left corner of the car, which described the lease arrangements. In 1975, the railway took delivery of 500 new double-door boxcars from Pacific Car and Foundry. They were leased from Procor Limited, and they were painted all dark green with no logogram. These cars served up until the CN takeover in 2004, and I'm not aware of any being repainted. This series was built by Evans and leased in 1979. They were equipped with 12-foot sliding doors, and they were painted all dark green with the dogwood logogram. An interesting stenciling feature on these cars was the outlined instructions for the door. Also received from Evans in 1979 was this series of double sliding door boxcars. They were the first boxcars on the railway with non-terminating ends. They were painted all dark green with a unique arrangement of the dogwood logogram. The dogwood was on a plate affixed to the right-hand door, and the remainder of the logogram appeared between the exterior posts in justified form. Again, note the outlined instructions for the doors. The railway obtained 500 new double-door boxcars from National Steel Car in 1979. They were painted all dark green, and these cars did receive dogwood logograms, which were applied on a plate welded to the side posts. A similar series of cars with plug doors for pulp service arrived in 1980. The order was divided between BCIT reporting marks for international service and BCOL reporting marks for general service. These were the first 100-ton boxcars on the railway, and they also carried the Dogwood logogram on a plate. This is one of the BCIT cars. And this is one of the BCOL cars, which received an identical stencil scheme except for the reporting marks. By now, the galvanized roof was a standard feature on boxcars. These were the last series of boxcars that were received prior to the railway's change of name to BC Rail in 1984. Let's now look at the railway's refrigerator cars. These were all delivered during the 1950s, and during the 1970s, most were repainted and stenciled for the British Columbia Railway. This car is from the first series, and these were rebuilt as mechanical refrigerator cars in 1974. You can see the refrigeration unit on the right-hand side there. They were painted light green and received the Dogwood logogram, which looked rather large on these low-height cars. It was positioned with the upper door stop in the middle of the O for Columbia. This car received the larger reporting marks and an unlined data table. 
This is a car from the second series, which received a similar scheme, except that the data table was lined. These cars were not converted for mechanical refrigeration. On this car from the third series, the dogwood logogram has been positioned further to the right with the upper doorstop between the dogwood and the railway's name. The data table was unlined. The last of the refrigerator cars was withdrawn from service in 1986. They were largely replaced by the railway's fleet of refrigerated trailers. We will now turn to the various types of flat cars. The railway's standard flat cars dated from the 1950s and 1960s and during the 1970s, many were repainted for the British Columbia Railway. They were painted dark green, and the wood decking was usually replaced at that time, initially appearing dark brown, and then weathering to a lighter color with age. The railway's name was spelled out along the car side in seven inch high microgramma bold extended letters. This example was built by National Steel Car, and it's an earlier repaint with Gothic style reporting marks. And this is another NSC built car in a very similar scheme, but with the later style reporting marks in the Helvetica medium typeface. This car was built in 1965 by Vancouver Iron and Engineering Works, and it has the earlier style reporting marks. Note that the ACI label is on a plate which extends down below the side sill. The log state cars were received from National Steel Car in 1962, and a fair number were repainted for British Columbia Railway. They were repainted light green, and they received 20-inch dogwood logograms. This car is an earlier repaint with the larger microgramma style reporting marks, and it has the dogwood logogram off to the right of center on the car. This is a later repaint with Helvetica medium reporting marks. Compared with the car in the previous photograph, the position of the data and the logogram are reversed with the logogram on the left and the data on the right. Here we see an even later repaint following the decision to repaint all cars dark green. The car is painted dark green and it has the Helvetica medium reporting marks. During the 1970s, the railway took delivery of several large orders for bulkhead flat cars to accommodate the fast-growing lumber market. This series was finished in the International Service Scheme with dark green body and light green ends. They received BCIT reporting marks and the railway's name appeared in a different typeface. This series was built at the Railwest Manufacturing Plant in Squamish. This was a subsidiary of the railway. They were painted all dark green and they received BCOL reporting marks. The railway's name appeared in the microgramma bold extended typeface. The vertical line on the bulkheads denoted the center line of the car for loading purposes. These 71 foot cars were built by Marine Industries and leased from North American. They were finished in the International Service Scheme with dark green body and light green ends. The center of the bulkheads was denoted by small arrows at the top and bottom rather than a vertical line. These cars went to CN in 1980. Several series of similar 71-foot cars were purchased by the railway in 1980. They were painted all dark green with BCOL reporting marks and the railway's name was in a different typeface with the letters somewhat spaced out. They had the vertical line denoting the center of the bulkheads. The railway received its first series of center beam flat cars in 1984, not long after the railway's change of name to BC Rail. They were painted all dark green with BCIT reporting marks, and the railway's name was spelled out along the center beam panels in a microgramma bold extended typeface. These were likely the last new freight cars to receive the British Columbia Railway name, as the next series came with the interim BC Rail logogram. The railway's trailer flat cars were repainted dark green following the change of name in 1972. This car is one of the initial conversions from standard flat cars, and it now appears in dark green with Helvetica medium reporting marks and microgram of bold extended railway name. 
The railway's first twin trailer flat cars were 85 feet in length and they could carry two 40-foot trailers. This car has been repainted dark green with Helvetica medium reporting marks and microgram of bold extended name. This car is from the final series of trailer flat cars received from National Steel Car in 1973. They were painted dark green with yellow highlights on the brake stand and the tie-down racks. The reporting marks appeared in a microgramma style typeface and the railway's name was on a plate welded to the side sill. This unusual car was a well hole flat car for transporting small boardable buildings up north. It was very likely built at the Squamish shops and it was painted freight car red with white stenciling. This car was always handled at the rear of the train just ahead of the caboose. Turning now to gondolas, we start with the National Steel Car gondolas received during the 1950s. Many of these were repainted for the British Columbia Railway and they received dark green paint with a 20 inch logogram on a plate welded to the side posts. This car has the earlier style reporting marks. This is a similar car in a similar scheme, but the plate for the logogram has been mounted quite a bit lower on the car. The interior of these cars was typically left in primer following the repaint. The railway received similar cars from Hawker Siddeley in the 1960s. Cars in the 9200 series had fixed ends and cars in the 9400 series had drop ends. The repaint and stencil is very similar to the NSC examples. And this is one of the drop end cars which has been repainted and dedicated to continuous welded rail service in 1984. The reporting marks are in a Helvetica medium typeface and the dogwood logogram has been applied directly to the car sides rather than on a plate. The railway's name has been justified between the side posts. Several series of 100 ton gondolas were received from Hawker Siddeley in the early 1970s. The third series arrived after the change of name in 1972 and they were painted dark green with the dogwood logogram on a plate welded to the side posts. The large rectangular stencil to the left was the standard logogram for the nailable steel floor. In the early 1980s, several of the 100-ton gondolas were converted for copper concentrate service to service Gibraltar mines. They were equipped to carry the Ecofab fiberglass covers and they received Helvetica medium reporting marks and new dimensional data. The plates for the logograms were removed and the replacement logograms were applied directly to the car sides, justified between the side posts. The fiberglass covers were usually painted light green. In 1983 and 1984, the railway partnered with CN to acquire a fleet of 100-ton rotary gondolas for Northeast Coal Service, servicing the mines on the new Tumbler Ridge subdivision. The cars were painted black with a yellow panel to indicate the end with the rotary coupler. These cars received BCNE reporting marks, which together with the dimensional data reverted back to a lined table. A 20-inch dogwood appeared on the right with either BCOL or the CN Noodle logogram below. The cars were built at CN's Transcona shops. This car was photographed while on exhibit at the Modern Rail exhibit at Expo 86. Each unit coal train required a car with rotary couplers at both ends, so these cars received a yellow panel at either end. This car has the CN Noodle below the dogwood. The railway operated a large fleet of wood chip cars to service the many mills on line, and this commodity evolved into export traffic for fiber co terminals in North Vancouver. Four of the railway's initial conversions from standard gondolas received BCR paint. They were repainted light green and they received 40 inch logograms on plates welded to the car sides. The stenciling layout was similar to that for the gondolas, but the reporting marks were moved up onto the side extensions. The railway's first purpose-built wood chip cars came from Vancouver Iron and Engineering Works, and this car has received a repaint for BCR in 1976. 
Again, the 40 inch logogram is on a plate welded to the side posts. The first order of wood chip cars from National Steel Car came with the PGE map logogram. This car was repainted in 1975. Repaints prior to 10 years of service were rare and they were usually precipitated by a damage to a car after a derailment. The second series from National Steel Car arrived in light green with the Dogwood logogram and these were the first new freight cars to be painted and lettered for the British Columbia Railway. The yellow panels at each end of the car stated caution, no roof. The next order for wood chip cars went to Hawker Sidley and they were finished in a similar scheme. The reporting marks and dimensional data started on the second panel from the left. The railway's manufacturing subsidiary, Rail West Manufacturing Corporation, completed 400 cars to the Hawker Sidley design in 1975 and 1976. They appeared in a similar paint and stencil scheme, but note that the reporting marks and dimensional data started on the third panel from the left. One of the Rail West cars was completed in a promotional scheme of white with black ends and it received a Rail West logogram on the same plate welded to the side posts. The slogan, a Western brand of rail cars, appeared between the posts in the center of the car. This car toured mills around the province in an effort to secure further orders for the plant. The railway's open hoppers had been used for revenue sulfur service, but by the 1970s they were more commonly used in ballast trains. This car has been repainted in dark green with a 20-inch dogwood logogram. This car is from a later series and it is also dark green. The dogwood logogram has been positioned rather high on this car side. The railway acquired a batch of open hoppers from the Union Pacific in the 1970s for ballast work on the Dees Lake extension. This one has been repainted dark green with microgramma style reporting marks, but it did not receive a logogram. Two series of slab side hopper cars were received in 1962 and they were originally painted light gray. This car has received a light gray repaint with Helvetica medium reporting marks and the dimensional data is in black. The logogram includes a 40 inch high dogwood, but a 20 inch high railway name. This car is from the second series and it was repainted light green with Helvetica reporting marks and a 20 inch dogwood logogram. These cars were used in grain, lime or cement service and several cars were also allocated to OCS dry sand service for replenishing the locomotive facilities. This is a first series car repainted after the switch to dark green for all freight cars. The reporting marks are Helvetica medium and the dogwood logogram is 20 inches high. This car is stenciled for grain service. A series of modern Pullman standard covered grain hoppers arrived from the Denver and Rio Grande Western in 1984. They were repainted dark green with Helvetica reporting marks. This first car in the group received a justified 20 inch dogwood logogram between the side posts. All subsequent cars did not receive a logogram, pending the name, the name change to BC Rail. The railway operated two series of pressure flow hopper cars for cement and lime service. The first series of shorter cars were delivered as PGE cars and several were repainted into BCR colors. The car is light green with a black lower body. The large reporting marks are in a microgram of style and the dogwood logogram is 40 inches high. The second series of larger cars were received from Procor Limited after the name change and they were painted light green with black lower body. They received microgram style reporting marks and 40 inch dogwood logograms and these were positioned rather low on the car sides. Two unusual cars were added to the railway's grain hopper fleet in 1974. These were combination box hopper cars which were built by National Steel Car and tested on CN and CP. 
This is the larger of the two cars, which was painted dark green with white doors, a green maple leaf on the door, and a large NSC logogram at right. The railway added its new reporting marks on plates welded to the side posts at left. This car was in grain service between Dawson Creek and Prince Rupert. The shorter car was painted white, and it is seen here after returning to the railway, following lease of the two cars to the Milwaukee Road in 1977. The reporting marks and the 20-inch dogwood logogram are on dark green plates welded to the side posts. A variety of older tank cars were operated in OCS, lube oil, and diesel fuel service. Most of these were rebuilt from wrecked tank cars which had been written off. This car was painted black and it was assigned to lube oil service. It is seen here after retirement and display in the Museum at Squamish. The diesel fuel cars were painted dark green and most received 20 inch dogwood logograms. This car had side personnel guards fitted in place of the more typical running boards. Several series of modern tank cars were received during the 1980s. This car has the hybrid sized dogwood logogram with a 40 inch dogwood and 20 inch high railway name. This is a later car painted dark green, which has faded considerably, and it wears 20 inch dogwood logograms. Note the red safety placard at right. These were coded according to the commodity carried. The last pair of these modern tank cars arrived in August 1984 after the railway's change of name to BC Rail. They are believed to be the only cars to receive this particular logogram with the dogwood and the new interim stylized BC Rail. Let's conclude with a look at the railway's fleet of highway trailers, which were seen on most freight trains. The van trailers included dry vans, heater vans, and refrigerator vans. All were finished in corrugated aluminum paneling and received 40-inch dogwood logograms on dark green plates welded to the sides of the trailer. The trailer numbers were stenciled on black panels painted on the ends and sides of the trailers, and they had BCRZ reporting marks. On vans without side doors, the dogwood logograms were positioned at the forward ends of the trailer. The fuel tank and wheel hubs were painted dark green, and on this heater trailer, the battery box and the heater unit were blue. Here we see a refrigerator trailer on the left and a heater van on the right. On vans with side doors, the dogwood logograms were positioned at the rear ends of the trailer. The refrigeration and heater units on these trailers are blue, but the battery boxes are light green. The railway also operated flat deck trailers, and these were painted light green. The decks were left a natural wood color, which lightened with age. This trailer has the railway's initials and the road number on the side sills. On June 19, 1984, the railway underwent a corporate and financial restructuring to retire its long-term debt. The operating subsidiary was renamed BC Rail, and the new name began to appear on rolling stock in January of 1985, initially with an interim italicized logo and later the final underlined version. However, cars with the British Columbia Railway name or logogram could be seen well into the 1990s. I would like to acknowledge and thank the individuals who kindly made their photographs available for this presentation. Images such as these are a valuable resource for modelers and we're very fortunate to have them made available to us. I hope that you have enjoyed this video on BCR freight car paint and stencil schemes and that it might assist you in creating more accurate freight car models. If you have, I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. I hope to upload additional prototype videos in the future. Until then, thank you for watching and see you again soon.